بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على النبي المصطفى وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا. All perfect praise is due to Allah the Almighty. I testify that none is worthy of worship but Allah, and I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is his final prophet and messenger. In the previous session. We mentioned the narration where the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam commented on verse 124 of chapter Taha, where Allah azza wa jal spoke about a depressed life, and he sallallahu alaihi wasallam clarified that this depressed life refers to the punishment in the grave for the disbelievers. I just want to draw the attention of the brothers and the sisters that there is a mistake a lot of people fall in when reading or hearing texts, whether verses or prophetic narrations addressing the issue of punishment whether in the grave or in the hereafter that Allah Azza wa Jal prepared for the non-believers, people tend to relax and say, Alhamdulillah, I'm a Muslim. This is not addressing me. It's not talking about me. That's not related to me. Now, the question I want to raise here who guarantees that me and you will die on the state of Islam or Iman? Does anyone have a guarantee that he will face death upon the state of faith? Do we have any guarantee that we will not turn back on our faith? One might say, Brother, what are you talking about? I say, after the death of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how many people left Islam? Was not the most serious and decisive battle during the time of Abu Bakr? The battle of Aridda. Does not history tell us of people who deviated though they were upon the right path and had some knowledge but then slipped away and drifted away 
very far away. Did the companions of the Allah anhum and the righteous generations after them not fear the fluctuation of the heart? More seriously, didn't the prophets and messengers fear that? Indeed they did. Allah Azza wa Jal tells us in the Quran about the father of all prophets and messengers, about messenger Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. Allah says in verse 35 of chapter Ibrahim that was named after him. Ibrahim, the messenger, the prophet and messenger. Listen up. And mention, O Muhammad, when Ibrahim said, My Lord, Make this city, referring to Mecca, secure and keep me and my sons away from worshipping idols. This is Ibrahim. This is not just anyone. This is Messenger Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. Another one, Prophet Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. Allah says in the Quran, in verse 101, My Lord, listen to the supplication of a prophet. My Lord, you have given me something of kingdom and taught me of the interpretation of dreams, creator of the heavens, and earth, you are my protector in this world and in the hereafter. Cause me to die, a Muslim, meaning on the state of Islam. This is a prophet supplicating Allah Azza wa Jal. Seeking the help of Allah Azza wa Jal to cause him to die on the state of Islam. Cause me to die a Muslim and join me with the righteous. Now let us talk about the best of the best. Let us talk about the dearest, the most beloved of mankind to Allah. Let us talk about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And let us see what he used to say. Imam Muslim, may Allah have mercy upon him, reported that Anas ibn Malik, may Allah be pleased with him, said that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would frequently say, Allahumma ya muqallib al-qulub, thabbit qalbi ala deenik. O controller of the hearts, make my heart Steadfast upon your religion. That is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the companions were surprised. Now if he fears on himself, so what about them? They said, 
O oh, Messenger of Allah, do you fear for us after we have believed in you and in what you came with? He said, yes. He said, yes, the hearts of the son of Adam, all the hearts of the son of Adam are between two fingers of the most merciful. He turns them as he wishes. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us steadfast on his virgin. Al-Baydawi, may Allah have mercy upon him. Said Allah Azza wa Jal has control over people's hearts. Has control of the hearts of his slaves. And none of his slaves has control of his own heart. And in this supplication, is an indication that this also includes prophets and messengers. May Allah have mercy upon us. So, the grave, the punishment of the grave, as we said, is only the first stage of the journey of the hereafter. We were talking about this in reference to the first verse of the set, in which Allah Azza wa Jal describes the event of the hour, the day of judgment, the advent of the hour, and what accompanies it with events. Finally, Al Hafiz al Hakami said with regards to the word al-fasl, judgment, differentiation, sorting out. He said, Allah Azza wa Jal will give justice to the oppressed from the oppressor. We will conclude with this verse number 17 and we will conclude with this this session and in the following session insha'Allah we will start with verse 18 of chapter An-Naba' wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk